<laughs> Woo -wee. Welcome to Little Creek Bee Ranch. It's that time again, finally. Jiminy Christmas. Let's date the time here. March 17, 3.30 in the afternoon. Time to set up some uh, catch boxes. So you're looking at the machine since you've been watching from last year, things have changed for the better. There's the Bobcat. Remember this field? <laughs> yeah, all that tall stuff, gone. Completely different place. We're gonna be back out here in the back setting up a catch box nursery giving you some ideas and strategies just kind of giving you a panorama view here getting set up we were working on something else a while ago with bee boxes and getting catch boxes set up and things weren't working out so good uh, you don't get too stressed you just shift gears so we're back down here setting up some catch boxes so <clears throat> all that tall ugly stuff we saw from you know years past gone much easier to maneuver trees cut trimmed just lots of land work to help us improve <laughs> it looks uh we worked hard, the whole family together. I mean, I'm impressed with what they've done. Yeah. Got to burn that pile, that pile right there. We got to burn that. Just trimmings. Much, much better. Much like a park, which is cool. Like that idea. You know, I mean, we want it to be nice, easy to maneuver around. So I'm gonna give you some strategies. The wind's blowing. I've got my whiskers on my mic. No bees, no bees. We're me not messing with any bees. So I don't have uh, concern of the bees jumping my, my uh, whiskers on my mic as they did last year and that kind of freaked me out. Okay, so getting serious now. So I'm gonna give you some tips and strategies. Let's see if I can uh, yeah, yeah. So, so if you look over here, all right, there is a pile of tin, and to my right behind me is uh, some two by f some sorry beams. Ah, get my thoughts together. Yeah, I'll move you. Hold on, hang tough. Not settled yet. <laughs> ah, we don't know. We'll see how this filming lesson works out hey, get in the groove ah, get in the groove man get in the groove okay <sighs> so so there's the bobcat to the left now what I'm well, <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can do this so what I'm gonna do since we have the road wireless Mike's going. I can be at a distance and it sounds like I'm right here with you. Eh, I'll talk you. I'll talk you through trying to figure out how to do this. Let's do this. I don't I, I don't have to go up close and film every single one. Okay, so we have an area down south. South of our property. Property's long rectangular, about a quarter mile long. Maybe maybe a 130 yards wide, 40 something. That's not, not a big deal. It's clean. That's important for management purposes. The other concern I have is numbers like um, width. Okay, so I'm, I'm teaching you now. Now I'm going to teach you some strategies here. Swarms or bees are a natural resource. They're moving and traveling above our head. You don't see them. Until they coagulate on a limb or a bush and you go, oh my gosh, look at those bees. Well, yeah, well, of course they come together on a limb, but where were they before they were there? They were in the air, 50 feet, maybe 100 feet, traveling, natural resource traveling. And you need to see, you need to treat this natural resource just like that, a natural resource, like a water well, oil well, 
it's a bee well above your head and you need to learn how to tap into it so we're going to cover some strategies <clears throat> how to tap into it and I'll be moving about and uh, setting up uh, some catch stands now these are temporary for the season Ugh. I'll break them down uh, at the end of the year for mowing purposes let's see let's see how we do I don't know maybe a little loud <laughs> don't know. <laughs> uh, as long as there's no skunks I'm good okay again this is temporary so we don't want uh, let's go here we don't want uh, grass <sighs> ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. we don't want grass growing up too much we'll mow by and weed eat accordingly yeah I see I see I see <sighs> Okay, you can see me there. That's good enough. Okay, so I use uh, a piece of tin. And again, this is a catch box nursery. These are not permanent stands. Right. Oh, right there. Two cinder blocks. Now, maybe you don't have, you know, a big, big yard or whatever. I, I know that. But you can copy what we're doing. Now, if you can get to certain numbers, like minimum of six catch boxes. Oh, that one. And that one. Minimum of six. That's good. We want width. Well, out here, since we have so much room, we'll go for 15, something like that. Whoops. Get to the other side. 15. And uh, my, my goal is to catch excess. I don't, I'm not going to keep all these. We'll see how the bees uh, flow for the year. I'm going to scoot it down. Down. That's nice. Like that. I could probably get three or four catch boxes in there and we're going to do a couple of lines of those and I just don't know where to I, I want you I want you to get a feel for width that's that's what I'm after let's go a little bit closer oh, 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 oh. see what is this guy doing now this is where this all starts that's what we're after. Piece of tin, two cinder blocks, two beams, four by four. Have the ends have been rotted, knocked off. They're level. That's good enough. Don't have to be perfect. Normally the beams are eight foot long. Four by four, eight foot, two cinder blocks. Now again, you got to remember, this is not permanent. So I'm not like doing what I call production colonies on top of these. This is simply a catch box nursery. So let me back out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so nine of those nine of those stands you saw. Let's see if I can build them out. And uh, well, so let's just do say nine times two is eighteen. Nine times three is twenty-seven. Woohoo! We can add on so whatever. <laughs> nine. Twenty-seven. That's pretty wide. I got plenty. Plenty. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Okay. So let's go right here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm thinking. <clears throat> you can kind of uh, take the same idea and kind of tweak it 
Now some of our members or students have big property. Well, that's cool. This is just eight acres. It's not a big deal. But if you have 20, 40, 50, oh my gosh, man. You're like in Fat City. It just depends. <laughs> How hungry are you for bees? <laughs> There you go. Yeah, how hungry are you? My desire is to catch as many swarms as I can, but I want them coming to me. <laughs> I mean, isn't it a lot easier if you get the swarms to come to you versus you driving all over the county? I mean, I'll go out and you know, so, but <laughs> I'm like, you're kidding me. Let's have them come to us. I don't know if this little piece of tin will work if I have little boards, little beans. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> I just know there's going to be a skunk come flying. You know. Mr. Smith and Wesson to take care of him. I, I'm all for thinking smarter, not working harder. All right? That's the idea. And if you will copy what we're doing, <laughs> well, there's no reason you shouldn't end up with same or similar results. It's based on principles. Okay, so there's a little one, there's two. Two can sit on there. Oh, you know. And I try to make them in a line where it's easy to mow. Get on the big bobcat and just zip. All right. Not a problem. Again, these are not permanent. All right. <laughs> okay, now let's uh, turn it over here. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to do one right there. And watching and learning. It's this front end work. It's, that's actually, actually more important than the other stuff. If you get it all set up right, I think you'll be surprised. You'll be like, holy crap. <laughs> well, you know, that's what we're teaching, man. Teaching you how to do this. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to... Ah, come on. Tin. Piece of tin. <laughs> I want it fairly... <sighs> Mowing, you know, I don't know, for us, mowing's like, <laughs> it's like a religion all the time. It's just part of beekeeping. You want to make it as simple as you can. Okay, so uh, let's do, I'll get you all squared away. That's all right. Hey, what is this? Oh, man. Fiddling. That's all right. Ah. I want you to learn. That's what I want. Once they're all set up, uh, then we'll uh, pull out all the catch boxes and uh, spray the inside of the box and the under the lid and the frames with Zentari. Zentari is a powdered microbial to uh, help kill wax moth larva so it doesn't build up on us. That's a big deal, really big deal. So I would suggest that if you are new to our channel and system and program that you go look at our ebook library. And we've written a book. Uh, hold on. 
written a book titled Ending, uh, Ending, Wax, Moth, Ending Wax Moth Damage Forever. Oh yeah, 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 that's a big deal. Unless you just like pain and suffering, you like that kind of stuff. I don't care too. Okay. Yeah. Yay. I'm rhyming. Yeah. Okay, all the way out to the end. Long beams. These are the long ones. Eight foot ones. It's okay. Again, these are temporary stands. Could I run a permanent hive down here? Yeah, I could. But uh, in the years past, we have been running four different apiaries. Oh my gosh, whoo boy. I'm 60 now. <laughs> I'm not 25. It's changed. And you go, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> So we change our system. So what, what? Catch box nursery. We're gonna let swarms come in, take the boxes, oh, springtime and summer. And then, and there'll be small boxes, catch boxes, or what I really like is um, five frame double mediums. That's really cool. Five frame double mediums. And I can smoke them, plug them, band them cart them up to the front apiaries to work them as a production colony. So if we get all this set up and then manage it spring and summer, it ought to be pretty cherry. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Okay. Yeah, I'll take you out here. Now. Let's take it around. Yeah. You know, now what I'm going to work on as your paradigms. <laughs> I always love traditional beekeepers when they come into our program. They're, they're like brain explodes. You can't do that. <laughs> Oh, oh, contraire, man. Yeah, just watch. Watch and learn, you know. And so, uh, you'll hear, you'll hear uh, beekeeping groups or maybe older beekeepers are, you can't catch a swarm unless the catch box is 25 feet up in the tree. <laughs> There's a snake. Uh, you wouldn't want to bet the house on that, would you? I'd win, but I don't want another house. So. You go, holy cow, man. Well, look, I'm teaching you. Showing you what we do. <laughs> want bees, you know. Let me get that tea. <laughs> Doesn't have to be pretty. Principles, width. Setting out two or three catch boxes. Now, I mean, that's how you start. And you'll be waiting. So let's go to the big river and set out a trot line. Well, we'll put a couple of hooks on there. And, uh, well, we'll just put plain old hooks, no bait. What do you think we're gonna catch tomorrow morning? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. So we take the same trot line, same trot line, 200 hooks, and we'll put some perch meat on there. Boy, the next morning, you're gonna have channel cats, flatheads, blues. <laughs> it's exactly what we're doing. This is exactly what we're doing. But you gotta believe in the principles, see? This is what's beautiful about beekeeping. It's all principle-based. 
they didn't, they didn't ask you for your opinion. <laughs> they don't care about my opinion. Yeah, that's good enough. There's four. That wasn't terrible hard. All right. Let's see here now. Let's take you on down. Not terrible hard. Okay, so let's just say I set out, oh, 27, 27. <laughs> I don't know if I have that much equipment. 27. Let's say 20 of them fill up. Am I going to keep all that? No. Heaven's sakes, no. No, 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 no. I could if I wanted. But uh, a little bit overwhelming, even for a guy like me. Good. How about we sell some off? Ooh, $200 a piece. You tell people, this is a swarm we caught. Great group of bees, I like them. After you worked with them, you know? But I got too much going on. Can't handle all this. That's, <laughs> that would be true too. <laughs> 200, well. 200 times, you know, 10. Well, isn't that 2,000? Oh, that, that Oki can, he can add and multiply. <laughs> you gotta laugh, man. Beekeeping is always a mystery. We hope for certain things, but it's still a mystery. We don't know. Now, you see, you go, well, that's so confusing. Wait a minute, stick with the principles. What's that mean? Okay, bees operate by a set of 45 to 50 principles. Changing. 45 to 50 principles. And uh, once you grasp the principle, <laughs> then things do get easier. You go, what? Okay, hold on. Don't, don't lose me yet. Stick with me here. I really do know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, darn it, man. Bees prefer nectar over sugar water. True. Bees prefer nectar over sugar water. Did they ask you about that? No, they don't care. They don't care about your opinion. They don't care about my opinion. Bees prefer nectar over sugar water. Heavy nectar flow, give them some sugar water, and they know it's there, don't get me wrong. They know it's there. They're going, no, 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 no. We'll, we'll wait and get to it when we can. Don't panic. Bees prefer nectar over sugar water. All right, here's another one. Queens love the dark. Oh, queens love the dark. Man, you, <laughs> you put a queen on a frame, frames, a box, and she'll dash down into the dark. Boom. Queens love the dark. Did she ask you about that? No. She didn't care about your opinion. These are principles. Okay, going back over here. Principles. I love bee principles. They don't, bees don't know state lines nor county borders. That's ridiculous. Bees operate by a set of principles. Yeah. And the quicker you learn principles, be, be principles, the better you're gonna be. Again, unless you just like struggling.
And so you, you know, you, you make yourself learn. That's the only way to do this. You, <laughs> you got a lot to learn. And oh, here's one. <laughs> it's the, <laughs> well, this is not a B principle, but this happens. I get texts or messages off from, from all over the globe. <laughs> all over the globe. And I'll, I'll, I'll get somebody that's kept bees for 50 years. <laughs> oh, you can't teach me anything about beekeeping. Oh, gosh. I've been doing this for 50 years. I, I don't, uh, I don't like that. I don't, uh, I don't argue with them. I just stay quiet. And, and what, whatever the topic is that, that tripped their paradigm, I'll eventually get a text back a couple of weeks later. Now, now, what was that you were talking about? <laughs> it's okay. It's just bees are so darn smart. Uh, your learning uh, will never stop. Never. So they do keep you humble. And, and if you don't want to stay humble, man, they're going to put you in the dirt. You'll always be behind them. You'll always be struggling. It'll drive you freaking bananas. You'll want to quit a million times over. <laughs> Gosh. And so I, I, almost, I, I almost sound kind of preachy. Well, kind of to a point. <sighs> Learn the principles. Golly, I swear, man. Okay, here's another one. Bees have two modes of communication. Vibrations and pheromones. Vibrations and pheromones. Did they ask you? No. <laughs> they don't care about your opinion. <laughs> I love it. Don't get mad at me. No, don't get mad at me. I'm teaching you. You want to learn beekeeping. It's not like anything you've ever done. These little creatures are smart as a fox. I mean, you who have got to work at this thing, and they're going to outfox you and give you mysteries and curveballs. Gosh, the learning curve. That's what eats people up, is the learning curve. <laughs> The learning curve will eat you alive. That's why we created a coaching system called the Personal Advisor Program. Okay, let's go. Uh, Personal Advisor Program coaching. Oh yeah, you bet, man. And we address all these issues, principles, learning curve, mysteries, Principles, have, bee principles, of course, have to do with the bees. Protocols have to do with the beekeeper. What to do, when to do, how to do, wh why to do. That's what you've got to learn. Well, I think a lot of people, and this is no criticism, they just don't understand. They don't understand beekeeping enough yet. And they, they think, hey, this is kind of cool. I, I, I want to do this. <laughs> said, okay. <laughs> so we'll find out here. We'll have a class. Maybe a basic beekeeping class coming up April 2nd. Yeah, good class. Maybe 15 people. You know, get, get down and dirty and deep and serious. We'll find out here in about an eight-hour class. <laughs> How serious you are about being a beekeeper <laughs> I mean it like scares people I'm not trying to scare them I'm just trying to be truthful you know if you're if you're up for a good challenge then you found a home but if you think you're going to get a puppy dog because it's cute <laughs> you better save your money <laughs> it's just the way it is you know just help people I'm contrary I, you know, I'm not trying to be mean or rude. 
it's the truth. T telling the truth. And then I have a lot of people come to class and you can just see their eyes. I've never heard this before. Say, so, yeah, that's right. You haven't. And that's why I'm telling you. I'm not trying to be mean. Don't you want to know what you're getting into? Oh, it's worth doing. Ain't no doubt about that. It's frustrating and hard. And people, they hadn't heard that. Well, oh man. It's all right. Worth doing. Catch box nursery. That's what we're working on. Cool. I like it. Oh yeah. Last year, if you followed us closely, we had catch boxes <laughs> scattered all over. Uh -uh. <laughs> not, 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 not this time. A no, little, little different. Work smarter, not harder. You know. <clears throat> uh, you know. And I'll run catch boxes, so I'll let them go till August. You never know. It'll slow down July. You still maybe catch some. But we'll see. Multiple choices. Bees love to pick and choose. You know, so you give them multiple choices out there. They get all excited. They're like, oh, look what we found. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Okay. Let's go forward. Oh, you know, I'm showing you, I'm teaching you. Yeah, the wind's blowing. Nice weather, kind of scattered clouds. Not terrible. I think this is a Thursday and we're supposed to get our last bit of snowy weather great. That's that's all you want to hear. Okay. Okay. Now uh, let's see. Uh, a little bit of noise there, sorry. It's all right. <clears throat> bah, 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 bah. I got a catch box nursery. Now, does it have to be this big? No. I just got the room to do it. And uh, we're going to push, we're going to push, push our strategies and principles. You know, last year, the swarms came in pretty nice. That was pretty nice. Get them lined up. Well, you know, you want it to look nice. It's a personal thing. Do the bees care about being straight line? No. <laughs> That's a beekeeper issue. <laughs> Oh man, bees. Let's see if we can think of another bee principle. Uh, oh, oh, here's one. Bees always vibrate. Ooh, that one gets beekeepers. She say, what? You mean the waggle dance? I go, oh no. It goes way beyond the waggle dance, man. That's just one form of vibrations. And you say, what is he talking about? This is stuff you've not heard. <laughs> Here's a homework assignment for you. Go to our main website, littlecreekbeeranch.com. Go down to the page that's titled Acoustic Beekeeping. And read the micro lessons. There's a, a, a list of panels, PowerPoint panel presentations. And we put a lesson together. Go read. Go study. So... I have a question for you. Birds chirp, right? Yes. 
Frogs croak to each other. Yes. Crickets. Uh, crickets cricket to each other. And bees vibrate to each other. You go, what? Oh, this guy has been hitting the hooch too much. <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm just gifted in what I do. I'm good at what I do. Don't you want to be good at what you do? Study, read, learn, enjoy. Study, read, learn. Love it. Piece of tin. Vibrate. Vibrate to each other all the time. And, and you say, no. Say, okay, here's a test for you. The next time you catch a swarm, I want you to, on a tree limb or something, now here comes some noise. Oh, man. I don't want to. Yeah. this. Let's see. Hold on. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, I kind of like that. <sighs> the next time you catch a swarm, spritz them with sugar water lightly. Put your glove, a glove, get a glove on your hand. And then gently, ever so gently, <laughs> slide your hand up, up, up into the swarm. Slide your hand up into the swarm. I mean, your fingers and palm, they're up. <laughs> and you're going, this guy is stupid. <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> oh my God. Slide your hand up into a swarm and you'll feel two things. Heat and vibrations. Heat, it's hotter than you think, and the bees are vibrating, and you can't really see them. You'll see a few bees on the outside of the cluster vibrating, wiggling. But we're talking constant vibrations. And hold your hand there. We teach our students how to scoop swarms. It's important. They stay better. They stay in their box better. That's cool. Like that. They do better. And you, you go, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna knock down your paradigms, man. Bees vibrate all the time. Uh-huh. <laughs> Here's another one for you. You get three signals that bees are going to swarm. The first signal is a visual signal. You'll see a massive buildup of drone larva. Principle. They ask for your opinion? No. First visual clue, massive buildup. You'll look at that and go, my gosh, what is going on here? That's the first indication they're in swarm mode. Why? Bees are sustainable, hardwired. Hardwired, sustainable. What's that mean? They're gonna build, they're gonna build extra drones, leave some behind, take some with them in the swarm so they can go out and mate with different queens. Hardwired, sustainable. Visual. Second signal is acoustic. Is acoustic. Nurse bees begin to pop and click. Again, here you go. You're going to go, what is this guy talking about? <laughs> See, man. This is stuff I teach my students, man. You have not heard this. You need to hear this. Let's see if I need to do any more. That's pretty cool. I like that. It's called a werble. Nurse bees can't feed the queen. The workers won't let her get to the queen. Won't let the nurse bees get to the queen. Ugh. Ooh. 
Oh man, hold on. And the uh, nurse bees get stressed and uh, we can't hear the pop and click. Eddie Woods back in the early 50s, late 40s, early 50s was able to uh, record it, isolate it. We have a nice speech from Eddie Woods back in the 50s. It's very cool. You can He isolates the clicking. It's very, very cool. So it's a second signal. Clicking. They're, they're, the nurse bees have pent up energy. They can't take care of the queen. As a queen goes out and uh, mates and comes back to take ownership of the house and begins to lay, the nurse bees settle that clicking down and the warble fades away. You know what? <laughs> oh yeah, not done yet. That, that was signal number two. You can pick that up on the APVox smart monitor, which you need to learn. Next one, the hiss changes of the colony. The hiss. <laughs> I teach this in class and I love to see the eyes roll. They're like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> I said, I know, man. You know, you, it takes a long time to learn all that. It's all right, man, that's why we teach it. Take the fat palm of your hand and bump the lower brood chamber. Just bump and listen to it. It should be fast and high. A fifth of a second, a very fast, high, sharp hiss. Just like that. It means ownership. I'm cool. Hey, we're cool. We own the house. Leave us alone. Get out of here. You'll, you'll get about two thumps before they come check you out. You go, okay, well, well, what's about that? Well, when they go into swarm mode, they're mentally abandoning their house. And the hiss changes. It's softer, it's softer and longer. It sounds like this. And you go, oh, that's not normal. No, it's not. Nurse bees are pent up with energy. They hear their big sisters hiss, not, not as loud. And they mimic them and you hear a wave. And you go, what? You're still, still not believing me? Okay. So let's say they get closer to swarm mode, to uh, swarming actually. Uh, let's say closer down to uh, where well, they got to actually wet queen cups with royal jelly and egg and you thump them. It could sound like this. Shh. Heard that. And you go, holy crap, what was that sound? Oh, they're about to leave. When a queen cup has an egg and a larva or larva pupa royal jelly in it, at day six to eight, they cap over. That's the last chore they have, capping over. The last chore, and then they're gone. So if you come up there and you thump the side of the brood box, and, hear, and here's what you hear. <laughs> nothing, nothing. And you go, oh my God, I don't think they're in there. <laughs> and you thump it again, and you thump it again. And you thump it again. And you look at the porch, I see little butts sticking out. They're about a day or two from leaving. They have mentally abandoned ownership of the house. And if you don't do something right then, they think, we have been found. He has found us out. We got to go. And they'll leave quickly. So you need to learn acoustic beekeeping. Acoustic beekeeping. Yeah, principles. Did they ask for your opinion? No, <laughs> they don't care about what you and I think. Here we go. Catch box nursery. Yeah, okay. So let's just go to the very end. Ooh. Yeah, 
check out our catch box nursery. <laughs> yeah. Well, pretty cool. I like it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine stands. Well, that's pretty cool. I can dig it. Mm-hmm. Oh, check it out. Let's go down. Let's look. Let's go up. Ooh. Yeah, we don't have to walk around. We'll just zoom in. <sighs> nice. Yeah. Ooh. And we'll see how the video comes out. Lesson. I wanted you to see what a bigger beekeeper does for catch box strategies but more importantly it's all about the bee principles that's what you really got to learn it's all about the bee principles so ooh, if I can get you excited to learn bee principles you ought to be curious and you ought to go man I want to know more about this good that's exactly what I'm trying to do you should our nation needs a whole lot a whole lot more beekeepers particularly with the geopolitical stuff going on and oh countries invading each other and it's like 1938 all over 1945 our country saw the highest population of beekeepers why <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, because we needed the honey. We needed a sweetener, first aid treatments, wax for lubrication, ammunition production. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> My goodness. We needed the beekeepers. Get ready. It's coming. <clears throat> Your ability. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Your ability to understand bees is going to determine how long you stay in beekeeping. People get frustrated and quit. Too much money, too much frustration. Well, I know that. That's why we don't want that. Oh, you know, takes time. Don't give up. Keep asking questions. So if you like how we coach and teach and the things you see, we have two YouTube channels. Primary YouTube channel is Ken Davis, the beekeeper. The other one is Little Creek Bee Ranch. Most of the videos go up on Ken Davis, the beekeeper, pretty cool. If you really like what we do, teaching sustainable beekeeping, strategies and principles, haha. Uh, you need to look at the personal advisor program. That's where the good stuff is. Ongoing coaching program. It's a subscription service, $29.95 a month, but for what you get, oh yeah. Yeah, I wish I had somebody way back there Offer that to me would have saved me a whole lot of pain and heartache. That's what we're trying to do. BIQ has got to come up. The learning curve is very high. Lower the learning curve. Raise the BIQ. A couple of uh, places on the website to look at. The Personal Advisor Program page. Go look at that. Page titled Begin Here. That's a good one. Another page titled, Making the Connection. That's very cool. We actually did uh, some uh, APVox tests. Colony gave us swarm indications. We split them out the next day and found swarm cells and everything, just like APVox said. You go, what is he talking about? That's why the website is there for you to learn and read the pages that are important, you know, Making the Connection personal advisor program our uniqueness another page titled our uniqueness 
get to calls off and on. Is what are you guys about? I hear about you. I say, well, we're sustainable beekeepers. We're contrary. We do not fit with traditional beekeeping. Mm -mm. Nope, sorry. Traditional beekeeping is just like hobbling a horse, man. I don't do that. Once you truly get into sustainable beekeeping, things change for the better. So I encourage you to check us out. Look into us really good. If you like this kind of uh, strange field lesson, we were just setting up hive, hive stands. Catchbox Nursery, that's what this place is going to be, Catchbox Nursery. Look at the personal advisor program. Read what's there. Gosh. Do a monthly newsletter with lessons, free Zoom classes, conference call at the end of the month with students, personal phone appointments, texting questions and answers, and a lot more. That's all in the program. So if you're interested in what we do and you like that, click subscribe and we'll be in touch. But uh, you can call, text anytime. Our information is in the face page of the website at the bottom. And uh, check us out. Hope you learned something. Got more to do, more lessons coming. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. Share it with some beekeeping friends. This guy's weird, but he's got some good points. <laughs> I hear that a lot. Yeah, man, that's cool. Hey, I'm all down with that. Check you later.